this is part for a relentless yeah y'all wearing the same thing i wore in my other video y'all mind you it's been about two weeks since i recorded that last one hold on by now we know who is relentless in this damn story it's paul <laughs> so, all right you guys so it's coming up it is the night of uh mina's a bit nervous she is coaching herself into saying, you know, I don't understand where these feelings are coming from. She loves Quentin and there's nothing that she would do to jeopardize her marriage. So she doesn't understand where these feelings are coming from. Now, yes, Quentin goes on these long extended um, uh, business trips and she does get lonely at times. And girl, we don't need you to be lonely and, and young and fine. <laughs> <laughs> so she doesn't know if it's that or what it is, but she knows that she cannot act on these feelings. Coaching herself, talking to her, saying, okay, this is just a business. We're going to go there. We're going to discuss this. After an hour, I'm heading home, right? And so she arrives a little earlier and she can see that Paul has already arrived, honey. He's sitting at one of the tables in the front and he is dressed a little bit more conservative, but Nina, but Mina, sorry, is looking at him and he looks really, really good. Looks like he, she noticed that he um, dyed his beard because before it was a salt and pepper and she noticed it was dyed. And so she walks towards the table and this one, she, she's like, well, this is different. He's like, oh yeah, I wanted to go ahead and get rid of my old man, old man grays. Yeah, but it didn't do before she could even stop herself, she said out loud, but yeah, it didn't look too bad on you. And that's when Paul's eyebrows kind of raised. He's like, oh yeah, she's like, you know, no, I didn't mean that. All I'm saying is that you really didn't need to dye your beard, but whatever makes you happy. And so he kind of smiles at her. They sit down, they start to order the food. And that's when Mina um, brings up the, the papers for the house and they start discussing the house, right? And then soon, 10 minutes into the, into the conversation, the um, waiter comes over with a bottle of wine. And Mina was like, I didn't, are we drinking? That's when Paul chimed in. He said, like, you know what, I ordered it. I figured that we could have a glass or two if it's okay with you. Have a glass or two to celebrate, you know, um, perching in this house, you know, sealing the deal. And so Mina looked at it and she's like, you know what, that's fine. You know, one or two glasses are, isn't going to hurt. Shut <laughs> analyzing the deal and that's when the conversation turns because they're done right they're done they they filled out the paperwork we're done Mina just needs to make sure to get copies of it when she gets back to the office the next morning so that's when Paul starts talking to her and you know I'm um, talking about his previous uh time in LA you know and he starts asking her questions about you know her time growing up in Georgia her family and she's conversating like again this is the first time she's really had conversations like this because Quentin is hardly ever around he's always on the road so she misses conversation she misses a bond she misses male companionship basically is what it boils down to so she looks down at her watch and he's like oh looks like I'm keeping you over too long and she's like yeah I'm sorry we really I really gotta go here in a couple of more minutes and that's when Paul says you know what I must admit that when I first saw you someone as attractive as you I knew that you were already taken if you don't mind me saying I knew you were already taken but if you were my wife I would not spend one day apart from you Mina is taken aback she doesn't know what to say so Mina isn't sure what to say and then Paul jumped in and said I'm sorry did I embarrass you she's like no I just I really never had anyone say that to me before so yeah i'm just taking i'm just a bit surprised that's all i'm not embarrassed and so that's when paul went ahead and paid for the bill and he you know walked her out to the car he said you know what um it's been great i want to thank you personally for helping me find my home here in the south and i hope that we can collaborate again on other business adventures and so she's like okay <laughs> so she's like yeah thank you so much um and thank you for dinner i hope you have a nice night she's like bye so um mina goes home sorry so mina goes over to her grandmother's house and her you know her grandmother hear her coming she's like oh hey baby how was everything she's like it was good big mama um how's i here she's go. Oh, she fell asleep honey just don't don't bother her and the child was fighting asleep <laughs> so um she sits down and all of a sudden Mina gets uh her phone buzzes and she sits down 
and it's a text from Paul. Oh, he texts her and he's like, I apologize if I embarrass you, but um, when I see a beautiful woman, I have to acknowledge her. So Mina kind of smiles, right? You know, reading the text. Show. And so that's when her grandmother looks, sees her. Grandmother's like, oh, you get a little love note from um, Quentin. And Mina feels like she's been caught and she puts her cell phone down quickly. She's like, huh? Uh, no, it's just something, um, just something funny I saw on, on my phone. And yet again, she becomes a little bit curious about this Paul. And she would be lying to herself if she did not um, acknowledge that she was attracted to, to him too. You know, even though he was 20 years her senior, he was still physically fit for his age, well put together, always smelled nice, always dressed nice, and just overall seemed like a great gentleman, right? So she goes on about her day. She's excited about, you know, finally having um, sold a house after weeks of not doing anything. Gets a phone call from Quentin and lets her know that, hey, you know, um, this trip is going to take a little bit longer than I expected. I won't be back for another week or so. Mina is sad about it, but she understands. So she's just looking down at her cell phone like, whatever. So, all right, you guys. So cut to Quentin. Quentin is not on his business trip. Quentin is actually going out trying to figure out what his brother, what what would you call him, y'all? Is that stepbrother? Not stepbrother. Well, well, we'll just call it a brother, even though by adopted, okay? Even though he was adopted, excuse me. So, but instead of going out on this business trip, Quentin is going to take the next week to figure out what the hell Paul has been up to since he hasn't seen him. Now, it's been about five or six years since he's actually seen his brother, but he talks to him at least once or twice a year, okay? Going through all his old contacts that knew Paul, and he finally finds someone, and he shows up at the door, knocks on the door, opens up the door, and there is Miss Georgia. Georgia turns around and is like, oh, baby Q. Now, I am not surprised that you would show up on my on my doorstep. <laughs> so Quentin is like, hi, Georgia. Is it okay if I come in? And um, we're going to call her, call her uh, Georgia, honey. So Georgia's like, oh, of course, honey. Come on and come in. Have a seat. So... Quentin comes in. Quentin already know who's, knows who Georgia is, okay? Because they have been friends. Excuse me. Paul has been friends with Georgia for a very long time, ever since he moved out to L.A., actually. So, he's been friends with him for a while, all right? So, that's when Georgia said, so, let me guess why you're here. Your brother finally made his way down to Georgia. Quentin said, yeah. Like, what is he up to? And so, Georgia said, I don't no, honey I haven't spoke to your brother ever since your mother died sorry ever since Mary died and so I'm not sure what he's up to so Quentin revealed that you know he's been down there looking for houses which by the way he's been in contact with his wife and so Quentin is expressing concern that he does not want his wife to know about his past and about whatever happened between his adopted mom and his brother it was scandalous that's one of the reasons why he changed his name but now his brother is asking for this money that um that he let borrow that he actually loaned out to him. Georgia took that as um, Quentin was coming down there to ask her for money. And so George was like, well, honey, I don't have any money. All my money is tied to the buns and stocks. And so Quentin is like, I'm not here to ask you for money, Georgia. I'm here to figure out what Paul has been doing for the last few years. So Georgia has no idea. He's again, he, she has no idea what's been going on. And, you know, they chat for about, you know, another 10 to 15 minutes. And that's when Quentin goes ahead and leaves. As he leaves, Georgia locks the door, picks up her phone and says, Hey, sugar. Yeah, it's Georgia. You won't believe who came back here. Mm-hmm. Yes, baby Q. All right then, Paul. Let me just tell you what happened. Child, you can't trust nobody. So Georgia went ahead and called Paul to let him know that his brother had been coming up there asking about him. Oh, Paul is like, well, thank you so much for the call, Georgia. Right? So that's when Paul picks up his cell phone and he texts Mina. I can't stop thinking about you. I know this is inappropriate, but I was wondering if you will be up for having a cocktail at the lounge. Mina is at home sitting, still a little upset that Quentin's going to be out for another week on his business trip. She gets a notification. It's a text from Paul inviting her out to the lounge. Mina looks down at the text. She reads it several times. 
before she responds, yeah, I can meet you. Ciao. All right, y'all. It's getting juicy.